Hey, what's up? Today I want to let you in on a secret for game developers. This is going to be something that's really useful if you're a programmer like myself with no artistic ability and you're looking for ways to find art for your games. Now before you click away, don't worry, I'm not going to say just go to the asset store because while I do love the Unity asset store and it's full of great stuff and they've even got a cool sale coming up soon, I'll, I'll link that down below, it is not the ideal solution for every art thing that you need. And you can find lots of cool stuff there, but there are a lot of times when there are things that you need that just don't exist in the asset store, maybe aren't perfect in the asset store, or maybe you've got a need that the asset store isn't going to allow for. One of the main things that stops me personally from using a lot of assets, in, especially in my YouTube videos, is that I can't redistribute them. So if you buy assets on the asset store, you're welcome to put them into your game, ship that game and everything, but you're not allowed to redistribute or just give out those source assets to other people. And of course, this applies just about anywhere that you buy art. If you're buying art off of a site, you do not get the right, and you can see it right in the license, that you cannot redistribute those source assets. So you can't give people your project files, you can't put it up on some open source thing. You can generally only use it in your compiled or shipped program or game or whatever the thing is that you're building. So that's one of the main restrictions. And the other ones is just being able to really tighten down and get exactly what it is that you want. Now, for me, I'm not very good at figuring out exactly what I want, but I can kind of tell what I like, what I don't like, and give artists a loose idea of how to get going. So what is the secret, what's the process, and what do I use? Well, this year and for the last couple of years, my main go-to has been Fiverr. And if you look at Fiverr, it seems initially like some maybe strange site where you're going to get $5 terrible art because of the name. It's based on the idea of gigs starting off as low as $5. And I want to clarify just right from the beginning, you're probably not going to find anything decent or good at $5. You will find some gigs on there for $5 you're not gonna find something good or reasonable that you would want to use. You may, however, find things for around the same price or maybe two to four times more than you would on the asset store. And sometimes, and I've gotta be honest with this, sometimes you'll find just great deals on there. You'll find some art that just amazingly low priced and really high quality. And it just varies a lot depending on the artist. I'm gonna go over some of my tips for how to find the best artists on Fiverr, show you some of the artists that I've worked with that I highly recommend. I'll just link them down below so that you can check them out yourself and go contact them if you're interested. Make sure that you're a good client though. Don't contact them and be terrible or anything. And then we'll go over the process, what it's like to get things on Fiverr, how you can do it. I'll show you all of the different things that I've got and then again at the end, give you the link to just download one of those art assets that, that I've had made. So let's get started with how to look for things on Fiverr. The first thing that you'll wanna do is just go to the Fiverr homepage and start searching for whatever it is that you need. You might want some 2D art done like I've had here. I had a character done for my daughter. I wanted to make a little pony game. So I had a concept art piece done, which was done by just searching for concepts and I searched for pony concepts specifically found one that looked pretty interesting, had some neat concept ideas, reached out, sent them a picture, and they sent me back this awesome concept. From there, I took it over to a 3D modeler, did a little bit of 3D modeling searching, actually found one that did exactly what I wanted. They made ponies in My Little Pony style off of concepts, sent over the concept, got back a pony. All of this came into less than 100 bucks for both the concept and the piece of art. It was a great great investment, I thought, and a really cool way to get things done all the way through the process. Most of the time, though, I don't actually go through the whole concepting part. A lot of the time, I will have the artists instead just concept it or build off of some other concept that I've already had. In fact, one of my favorite pieces is this robot that was done off of this little logo alone. I sent over this logo, got back this amazing robot, and well, I was so impressed with it that I actually went back to this artist many, many times. I think if you look at the reviews, you'll see I've gone many times to have all kinds of different add-ons put onto this robot. Things like blasters and jet feed and scanners, all kinds of just cool extra features and little things that 
I thought would be neat and useful for YouTube videos and for my student. I'm going to include this in my game architecture course for my students so they can have a character that has all kinds of cool inventory upgrades. Go pick up a blaster, have it show, upgrade your feet and have it show, maybe swap out your your headpiece or your antenna and have that show as well. That was kind of a neat thing and something that was really easy to ask for on Fiverr. Now, if you're asking an artist to create something like this for you on Fiverr, it's important to make sure that you know what you're asking for. Just ask them to create alternate sub meshes, things that can replace or be toggled by switching out a sub mesh. If you tell them that, it's usually enough for them to be able to figure it out. Now, you may or may not want that sub mesh to share a texture or material with your other ones. In this case, I've opted for totally separate materials and textures. And then once I feel like I'm all done with it, I'll probably have him optimized down to a single texture and a single material or maybe two or three separate materials, something a little bit more optimized. But when I'm working with Fiverr assets, at first, my goal isn't to have them super optimized. It's to have them look and feel exactly how I want. And then I can have somebody optimize it later. So let's take a look at what the process is like to get characters. And then I'll show you some of the other art that I've had made on Fiverr. The first thing, of course, you've got to do is find an artist. Or what I recommend is to find multiple artists. I like to find three to five different artists that I think can do the job or might be possible opportunities or options. And then I'll hit the heart button. I'll usually find somebody that's in a low price, a medium price, and a somewhat higher price, get a little bit of a range. And then instead of just ordering, I will reach out by hitting the contact seller button and contact each one of the different sellers. And you'll notice that if you look at the different gigs, a lot of them say, please order or please contact me before ordering so they can get an idea of what your project is, make sure that it's in the scope, something that they're actually able to do that meets their skill set. They might be great at like you know, organic characters, not robotic or metal things, or might be great at vehicles and not environments. And they want to make sure that you're asking for something that they're good at. So I'll contact them, give them a good idea of what it is I'm looking for, and then tell them that I'd like to just know like what gig I should pick or would they like to send over a custom offer? A lot of the time they'll send over a custom offer for just that one or they'll tell me go pick you know, whichever gig kind of matches. And when you look at the gigs on Fiverr, you'll see that there are three different tiers almost all of the time. There's a basic standard and premium. I think the names change from gig to gig, but it's essentially the same. A low price one, it's kind of an entry level that may not include everything that you're thinking of. So make sure you take a real close look. This one, for instance, doesn't include UVs, textures, and materials. Standard, however, does include that and give you a good idea of where you're at and gives you the time and everything as well. And then you can go up to a premium one, which would be a higher level version or a higher quality product. And you can kind of expect to see those options on everything. Usually I kind of go for around the middle, sometimes up to the premium. I almost never pick the bare minimum one because it's usually just not the best thing for the artists and not... Um, not what I'm looking for either. So go find a good artist, find a couple of them, contact them all, and then work with the one or two that you think works best. In my opinion, though, if it's within your budget, try working with a couple different artists at the same time. Have them all do the same project. And then once you've found the artist that's the one that blows you away and super amazing, like I found here, then just keep contacting them and have them do more and more stuff. Now let's take a look at a couple of the other artists that I've hired because one just popped up while I was recording this and I thought it's definitely worth sharing and I want to get these guys stuff out there because they make great art and if you're looking to hire an artist I'd recommend all of these ones that I'm going to share with you. So this was Eric who did a space station which came out amazing. It's got endless corridors, rooms that I can randomly generate, lobbies, and a giant hangar so I can land spaceships in there. I also did quite a few interesting different props that I think are really neat. And we're going to use all of these things in the architecture course, but also in some videos. Expect to see some space station generation videos coming sometime soon. You can see Eric's gigs right here and contact him on either the props, environments, or game art. I went with game art and we just kind of went wild with it. Definitely a great artist. Let's go on to another 3D artist, one of the character artists. And this is the one who made an alien based off of some concepts that I sent over. So a lot of artists or pro sorry, a lot of programmers might think, hey, I'm not a concept artist. How am I going to possibly give them what they need or what they want to be able to make it? Well, if you use something like Milanote, you can throw together a bunch of images, send that over as some inspiration, maybe mark down notes of the things that you like and don't like, and it'll go a long way. That's what I did here. Got back this amazing character. 
in a very quick amount of time. And it was it was one of the ones that was very optimized and just works. So another artist that I highly recommend, go check him out. It's linked down below. The last artist I wanted to show off today made this creature with these awesome blend shape spikes. So if you've never used blend shapes before, you probably want to hang around, download this character and try them out drag it and watch it morph. It's also got a nice little add-on there so that you can mind control it. I'm going to turn this into a third-person shooter tutorial. I can shoot mind control things and make the buy, the bad guy kind of walk away. At least that's, that's the plan. So if that sounds interesting to you, by the way, make sure that you hit thumbs up and just drop a comment below. And if you have some ideas for what else I should put into that third-person shooter, let me know too. But back to this artist. Amazing character with really cool animations really blew me away. I highly recommend this artist. If you want to have some aliens done, some creatures, I'm actually going to work with them again to have something done. I guess another creature done. I'm just trying to come up with the concept. In fact, if you have an idea for um, maybe an, a loose sci-fi creature theme that I should have done, drop a comment down below and maybe I'll go with that as the, the next one. I'm trying to figure that out for the next... Uh, for actually, I guess this week, so we can get that in there. But this creature will be available for free to download. There'll be a link in the description below if you'd like to go grab it, try it out, play with the blend shapes yourself, see kind of what it's like, and then maybe go hire the artist. I'll also link this artist. You can go check them out right here. And if you're interested in this artist or any of the other ones, just click the link down in the description. I'll get a link for each one of the artists and this character, the little creature, is available for download too. You can grab that down there as well. All right, if this was helpful, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, share. I appreciate it. If you have questions or thoughts about it, something that I missed, drop a comment below. All right, see you next time.